What's up guys? So this video is inspired by Plant Eats, who uploaded a video a few months ago basically questioning Mike the Vegan's qualification to speak on behalf of vegan nutrition. Okay, today's video is all about Mike the Vegan. This guy seemed to almost instantaneously become a member of the vegan social media elite. Now, I see the appeal here. He really sells himself as a scientific authority. What are Mike's credentials anyway? And is this even a fair question to ask? He has over 170,000 subscribers and his videos get tens of thousands of views. And there's no question to me he's influencing a lot of vegans on diet and nutrition. And all I could find was that he's a self-proclaimed science writer. Nowhere had he reported if he had a science degree or a master's degree or a doctoral degree. And I'm not suggesting that every YouTuber should have advanced degrees to talk about research. But if you watch his channel, he never really discloses that he's a layperson, which is something I personally would appreciate knowing. He also made a more recent video doubling down on his skepticism of not just Mike's, but many other vegan YouTubers' credibility to speak on veganism. And his subscribers do certainly look up to him as a vegan nutrition pundit. As of filming this video now, he has over 180 videos, and over 100 of them are either on nutrition or some other scientific-related topic. And he does identify himself as a science writer. Now, this video isn't about Mike the Vegan in particular, and although I don't find his content that appealing, I don't have any qualms with him. Aside from his acquiescence to cherry-picking and misrepresenting research to push a narrative on vegan diets. Unnatural Vegan has an excellent video explaining why even vegans should avoid this practice. Rather, this video will explore the question of who is qualified to speak on vegan nutrition, and maybe also touch upon this weird phenomenon of the death of the expert in the vegan community. Plant Eat's main point of contention with Mike is that Mike is essentially selling himself as an authority without disclosing his credentials to his audience or making it clear that he is an unskilled layperson. He's basically a lay vegan. I apologize for that. I always find it interesting when vegans uplift vegan YouTubers like Mike and others while simultaneously dismissing the advice of actual nutrition experts and dietary organizations. Now, I think a lot of this just boils down to conspiracy and mistrust of medical science, this strange belief that vegans have access to knowledge that the, the experts don't have access to because we're vegan. Uh, I did touch upon this in my collaboration video with Kayla. Uh, be sure to check out that video. Many vegans also favor incredibly biased doctors like Dr. Greger or even McDougal, who are known to exaggerate and misrepresent studies to push a narrative about vegan diets. In their crusade against oil, both Mike and Dr. Greger frequently misrepresent research to scare vegans into a version of veganism that they find acceptable. The problem is that their recommendations go against consensus. Consensus is that both olive oil and canola oil are healthy. This review and meta-analysis of cohort studies found significant associations could be found between higher intakes of olive oil and reduced risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular events, and stroke, respectively. Olive oil consumption, specifically the extra virgin variety, is associated with reduced risks of cardiovascular disease and mortality in individuals at high cardiovascular risk. If you don't know what consensus, a meta-analysis, or a cohort study is, then you should probably familiarize yourself with research before trying to contradict me in the comment section. Now, on the question of whether or not vegans must have proper credentials to speak on any particular topic, I'd say absolutely not. The vast majority of vegan YouTubers who report on vegan nutrition have no advanced degree or even rele relevant degree to nutrition. And while some YouTubers love to flaunt their fitness trainer certifications, this is nowhere near the credibility of an advanced degree. Generally, these fitness certifications are just diplomas that personal trainers can receive for their general advice to be sound. It's nowhere near the level of training and education it would require to become a nutritionist. And whenever I point this out, vegans counter me with, oh, well, experts can be wrong too, or uh, truth is more important than credentials, and this does have some truth. Yes, highly credentialed people can promote flat out wrong and even harmful information. Think Sean Baker, a former physician who had his medical license revoked after promoting a harmful raw diet to his patients. Also, think about the quack Dr. Mark Hyman, who exploits people's ignorance by selling them bullshit detox supplements and making a profit from it. There's another well-known case in 1998 in which former researcher Andrew Wakefield, along with 12 co-authors, published a case series study in The Lancet claiming that they found evidence of measles virus in the digestive systems of children who had exhibited autism symptoms after MMR vaccination. 
Of course, this resulted in widespread fear and mistrust of vaccinations amongst experts. Much of this distrust is still prevalent today, with pseudoscience peddlers claiming vaccines cause autism, despite the severe lack of evidence to support this claim. Now, Wakefield's study was strongly condemned by the scientific community for being deeply flawed, for having an extremely small sample size and an uncontrolled design. And in lieu of the rather speculative claims of the conclusions, his publication was eventually retracted. Britain's General Medical Council also banned him from further medical practice. So these are all examples of experts who misrepresented and distorted science in order to push some kind of narrative that would have some kind of personal gain. So no, credentials alone do not mean that you are qualified to speak on any particular topic. However, I don't want to completely downplay the importance of credentials. Science is a body of knowledge related to the structure and the behavior of the natural world, but science is also a process. More specifically, it's a strictly disciplined study of both causes and consequences. Scientific credentials like a nutrition certification or a master's of science degree, uh, they are indicators that that person has endured proper training and has a, an adequate amount of knowledge on that particular field of study. So we explained earlier that highly credentialed people can and do promote quackery, but the higher level of education a person has from a general high school elective, science to a university minor, to a university major, to an advanced degree, uh, the more likely that that person is to know what the hell they're talking about and the more likely that that person is to recognize his limitations. And this isn't to say that only scientists can speak on behalf of science because, I mean, we have people like Bill Nye the Science Guy, who is a science educator, who himself is not a scientist. While Bill Nye does have a mechanical engineering degree from Cornell University and has done numerous television projects, including the famous PBS Bill Nye the Science Guy, and more recently he hosts his own uh, Netflix show, Bill Nye Saves the World, I highly recommend you watch it. It is helpful to to note that he himself is not an expert. In terms of trying to identify quacks versus experts and who to take your advice from, uh, it is really, really important to gauge whether or not this person acknowledges consensus. Scientific consensus is the collective judgment, position, and opinion of the community of scientists in a particular field of study. Consensus implies general agreement, though not necessarily unanimity. To use it in a sentence, anthropogenic climate change is scientific consensus. The overwhelming majority of experts, so people who actually understand and study this for a living, they agree that the Earth is warming, and it's warming due to human activity, and it's caused by us releasing more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere faster than they can be broken down or absorbed by the Earth's geological processes and biomass. Chances are pretty good that you are not a professional climate scientist, and so odds are also pretty good that you're not capable of understanding the research, nor do you have the time to read the research. If that's the case, then the rational thing to do is to defer to the experts. Well said. To answer the question of why we should defer to consensus, it's because consensus gathers all of the research and all of the experience from the entire scientific community in that field of study. It's a way to tap the collective knowledge of the group to craft the most accurate conclusion possible. Refusing to acknowledge consensus means that you know something that most experts don't know, or that the experts are lying, so basically conspiracy. I'd also like to discuss a comment that I got about evidence-based impartiality, whether or not uh, people, an average person can just conduct his own research or uh, can just maybe study his own on his own and just reach some kind of rational conclusion, this is not very likely. Considering that the average person has no idea what p-value is or what margin of error is, I don't understand how people can think that they have the expertise to reach some kind of evidence-based impartiality or evidence-based partiality. Maybe with technology like clean meat, uh, you, there could be some kind of evidence-based impartiality because there are questions that there are no answers to yet. But with topics like climate change, there is no such thing as evidence-based impartiality. The only rational decision is to defer to what the experts concede. So to answer the original question of who is qualified to speak on vegan nutrition, I think that the answer, there is no simple answer, first of all, but it really just boils down to two things. Researchers or experts who are knowledgeable in their field and of whom conduct scientific research, and teachers who know how to effectively pass this knowledge on to the public. On some rare occasions, this turns out to be the same person, 
like astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson or vegan dietitian and activist Jack Norris. This is also often the case with college professors who are paid uh, by universities to conduct research for academic journals and of whom also teach students. So in terms of who is qualified to speak on behalf of vegan nutrition, I would say that the answer could be found by asking yourself these three questions. Are the recommendations in accordance with consensus? This is the number one easiest way to identify whether or not someone is a complete quack or a pseudoscientist. If their advice goes against the general consensus or the general agreement of most of the people in that field of study, they're likely wrong. What are their credentials? Again, it doesn't mean that just because they don't have credentials, they're not qualified to speak on veganism. But if they do not have credentials, do they disclose this openly? Do they recognize when they are wrong, or when they are wrong, do they amend their recommendations? Again, another easy way to identify if someone is just dishonest, really isn't qualified to speak on whatever it is they're talking about. So, what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Comments and questions down below. I will be holding a live stream on my channel next Wednesday, February 7th at around 7.30 Eastern Pacific Time. Leslie, my dear friend Leslie of Nerds and Nutrition, will be joining me for that live stream and possibly Kayla Sweetie, who I recently collabed with. So um, yeah, if you want to tune into that, then tune into it. But uh, anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. Please subscribe if you have not. I will be uploading more frequently. And uh, that's it. Peace.